Hello, welcome to jasonchats.com. So it's about 2.30 in the morning and Andre, Andre's asleep. That's why he does his most of his farting. And I woke up this morning. Sounds like the beginning of a song, don't I? Woke up this morning. Do, 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 do. Um, and I was in a really bad mood. I don't know why I just was and had my breakfast I made a let me bore you to sleep session and I went back to bed and I spent most of the day in bed really till about three took Andre for a walk, went for a long walk, came back, had some uh, tea cakes, and just spent the rest of the, the evening pretty much working on my website, which I do believe is looking mighty wonderful it's getting there it really is getting there jasonnewland.com that is jasonchats.com is just the portal for the the vlogs that I do uh, I don't really have anything else on there other than the all the various videos from the past and the future that will be on there Of course, you can just go to the YouTube channel and go watch them there as well. So I've, I'm quite pleased with how the website's going. I did a lot of work on it and then I lost a lot of work. So I had to redo it, figure out how to redo it. And got a little bit confusing at times, but it's coming together okay, I'm fairly pleased. There's still work to do. But I've kind of got the foundations there. Um, I'm getting more subscribers as well to the website, which is nice, so thank you if you're watching this and you're subscribed to the website. Um, thank you for those that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, this one, the Jason Chats Bipolar Vlog or the other three YouTube channels I've got. The pain relief, chronic pain relief, relaxation or sleep and hypnosis ones. So I'm gradually getting more subscribers, people that have been with me in the past have been with me. People that have subscribed in the past have come in, kind of coming back bit by bit, little by little. I still have some work to do on the some of the channels. Still some sessions to upload, but I uh, I kind of had enough of the videos for a while, uploading them and making videos. I just needed a break from that, so I concentrate on the website. I'm, I'm talking. By the way, when I make this, I don't talk loudly because I generally make them fairly late at night, and I don't want to disturb neighbors and stuff. Oh, I had an email uh, from Spreaker. So I'm with Spreaker and I pay, pay them. And I think it's about $20 a month, something like that. And they sent me an email saying that they couldn't take my money. So there wasn't enough in my account to take it. 
uh, luckily they're going to take it tomorrow so I get paid tomorrow so I have a lot of uh, bits of money coming out of everything and just I don't regret paying for the podcasts um, still a bit I need to change the tape it's looking yellow shouldn't really look yellow I was doing the washing up earlier I I don't regret making the the podcasts or paying for the podcasts because I have managed to reach a, a much wider and larger audience in the last month or so or two months however long I've been doing sort of getting the extra podcasts but it is costing and I need to sort of figure a way around that so I'm probably going to make a page for my website on how uh, I just like call it support me and the different ways that people can support me just, I just try and I'd like to at least get the costs the running costs covered if I could do that then it would make my life a lot easier if I could get more than the cut the running costs I could then pay for more stuff, more podcasts, more uh, promotional services, you know, things like that. But I'm going to look into it and stuff, I don't know. I'm feeling tired, so it's probably very much my time to go to bed. Last night, I didn't feel very well, physically. Well, uh, and I was dreaming. I just had these weird dreams. And there's this recurrent dream. Two recurrent dreams that I have kind of mixed together. One is about working. Of course, that's a nightmare. Mm. One's about working and leaving and then realising I was working, but... Um, got a weird buzzing in my ear working but not declaring it to the social service not social services but the the tax people so that I was still claiming benefits so I've kind of got that recurring dream that I'm working in a call centre and I can't go in anymore because I'm not well and then oh, what am I going to do uh, you know all that stuff and then another dream is being homeless and two things as weird I've paid I owe money on rent for a flat that I'm not even living in so I don't know what that's about and there's another one where and it's kind of connected where I've put a car into some kind of garage to be looked after and the money it's cost me money and it's a crew and the money's getting you know larger and I need to pay to get the car out I should point out I've never driven never driven a car never owned a car don't even have a driving license so I don't don't know what any of it's about and I need to start doing a bit more reading as well. I know that's not really related, but I'm very much into self um, therapy in a sense, self analysis. And although I do still kind of self analyze myself, I don't, um, I haven't read any therapy books for a while. So I'd like to get back into that a bit more. just with all the the online stuff it takes so long it's it's continuous and especially 
with me making the sessions every day, which I've been doing. And yeah, just as a, a little bit unbalanced, the, I'm a little bit unbalanced. That's why I take medication. Oh, I'm just a bit unbalanced. I think there's more going out than there is coming in. I need to redress that and have some more stuff going in. I started listening to a podcast recently and it was about uh, it's about the, the brain and how the brain changes. And there's stuff I already know, but it's like neuropsychology or neuroplasticity. I think, yeah, it's called neuroplasticity. And how the brain is continuously growing all the time, continuously changing all the time. And it changes depending, those changes depend upon how we think, what we think about, what we focus on. This is stuff that's self-help books hypnosis books, psychotherapists have been talking about for you know, a hundred years, probably actually thousands of years in a sense with Buddhism, thousands of years. Yet they've now got the technology to the scientists and they can see in the machines the, um, I forget what they're called, but you know, the the radiation machines or whatever, the, the neurons machines, they can see the brains and they can see the neurotransmitters and all that stuff, the connections. And they can see which part of the brains activate, which parts grow. Um, so now all of these, not all of them, but a lot of the ideas and thoughts and um, regarding you get more of what you focus on you you know it affects who you're around affects you what you think about affects your life and all that stuff and it's kind of obvious really but they've now got it in it's a scientific fact it's no longer an opinion or a belief system it's this is based on fact and I think that's quite interesting and exciting. But then I think of it and I think, well, okay. What about people with a mental health issue, illness, brain issue, brain injury, or whatever it might be. Because in a sense, I suppose, brain injury, the brain is not working in the way that maybe it used to, or the way that um, the average brain would work. It works differently. Parts of the brain may not connect. Part of the brain, parts of the brain may be more active than other parts. as in the same as with schizophrenia or bipolar or uh, I was going to say ACDC, OC, OCD, um, ADHD, uh, you know, you name it, there's so many different things, sort of depression, agoraphobia, uh, various fears and stuff. anything that's like seriously affecting your life so my my take on this is I might be wrong but this is my take on it this has been my take on it for about 20 years when I first started uh, reading and a little bit about you know neuropsychology and neurology or neuro whatever you know the brain and what parts are activated and 
by the thoughts and you know then my interest was hypnosis and all that stuff so I thought with maybe a neurological a neurologically normal and you could use the word normal for this situation a neurologically average person could have a, a situation where A trigger A and B is the the thing that occurs and it kind of works quite well and it's easy to kind of figure it out and, but maybe with someone with a brain injury or let's say someone with uh, a mental illness or a mental something going on in the brain there trigger A A click that but it might trigger N instead of B N so there might be a diff it might it might still be able to trigger the B but you just need to figure out which one triggers the B so it's a different pattern it's a different process and I guess it's figuring out that code which I imagine we all have different codes we'll have our own ways to get to the same place and even if we get to the same place that place is going to I guess be individual for all of us you know we could all go to the same beach and have completely different experiences I suppose you'd all share one thing it would be share a funny memory of me burning in the sun So yeah, I just, uh, I'm interested in that stuff. Interested in, not just a, a mental perspective, but a physical perspective with diseases and illnesses and the idea that drugs, like medical drugs, do something, they stimulate in the brain something that releases a chemical, or releases something. I don't, again, I'm not, a, I'm not a biologist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not, you know, any of that stuff, but the drugs in themselves are just a trigger to release what you've got. It's the brain that does the work, the brain that sends the chemicals and to do the healing, to do the whatever you know so I find that quite interesting it's like oh how can we do it without the drugs is there a way of getting the same results of ke as chemotherapy without the chemotherapy you know without the intrusive um, treatment is there a way another way to do it know that I said I wouldn't ever sort of suggest anybody use any treatment other than the official medical treatment because apart from being against the law in pretty much the Western world um, you know you should listen to a doctor they know what they're doing but I'd love to look more into that I've heard some amazing stories you know from just the placebo side of things alone is amazing I mean placebos don't you know it's not going to work if you know it's a placebo so if you do a trial telling people that you know if you've got 20 people and you tell them all that 10, 10 of you are going to have placebo, 10 of you are going to have medication that works the chances are that 
um, I would say that the placebo, just mention the word placebo, starts putting doubt into people's minds. And I think the result would be different if you told every, all 20, and I know I don't think it's legally allowed, but if you told 20 people, we're testing, we're, we're giving you this medication. We're all giving you, we're giving you the full medication, all of you. Compared to, we're giving you 50, you know, 50% of you are getting a medication, 50% placebo, and no one knows what they're getting. I reckon the results would be a lot different. I'm sure it has been done. I think any single experiment that you can imagine has been done at some point, whether legally or illegally. Um, guaranteed. Somewhere somebody's, you know, tried to s splice together a human and an animal and, you know, all the things that we're not allowed to do that's against the the rules that's been done, of course it's been tested. Someone's gone out there and tested it. You're telling me that they found a way of cloning sheep and that's, they just stopped there. No, come on, humans have been cloned. Just because we don't know about it, it's, you could be walking around with cloned humans. You know, it's amazing. I don't, I'm not a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist person at all it just seems obvious that that stuff is going on and I'll tell you what's a bit worrying at the moment is the whole I don't know what it is but this country seems to have a real hard on for Russia at the moment you know with all I don't, I don't understand really what's going on. They clearly know something that they're not telling the public. The, the government. Um, but they're just, they're trying to go to war. They're trying to, you know. I just think it's sad because who ends up getting the worst damaged? It's the civilians. It's always the civilians that work, get worse off. So in Syria, so we'll be going over there, Russia, or America, or whoever goes over there. Civilians, they're the ones that will be caught in the crossfire. And they're the ones that we're trying to protect and then there'll be refugees or they already are refugees and then that causes problems from all angles as well so it's just I don't know amazing it's, uh, it's going on, the news is going on and on and on. And there's infighting in the House of Parliament about the NHS not having enough funding. But they've got money for rockets, they've got money for missiles, they've got money to go to war in another country that has nothing to do with us. I'm not sure about the priority. I'm no political expert. I just, I've been around a while now and I've seen a few of these military actions over the years and none of them, there's never a positive outcome, I don't think. There seems to be one.
thing is I live in a uh, like a squatty town like an army town and so there might be loads of young people being shipped off up to Syria um, and their lives would be at risk and just doesn't start, just doesn't seem fair I mean especially if you think that we've got such a high population of elderly people we need young people to stay alive you know I'm, I'm going to need young people to look after me in a few years when I'm all old and wrinkly or wrinklier I actually think that eventually my neck will look like my penis does now. It'll just be like a, like a wrinkly, actually a hairy <laughs> wrinkly thing. I need to sh have a shave. And just, it's just getting a little bit long on my neck, but hey. Again, I've talked for way longer than I expected. I thought it was going to be a two minute job. I was tired so I will go <sighs> I would send everyone a tweet you know about what I'm up to but uh, I'm not the president am I you know I'll leave the tweeting up to him All right I'm gonna go take care of yourself everyone and stay safe wherever you are and for those of you that live in Syria or near Syria that's been affected by this and I know people listen to my podcasts from all over the world or everywhere um, whether you're in Russia, Syria, Mexico America, which is my main population for people that will listen to my stuff. England, Ireland, Portugal, like China, Japan, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, you name it. I wish you all well and all safety and all just hope everyone's okay and I just really hope that the powers in charge of those big bombs that kill lots of people um, don't go and kill lots of people that's what I hope yeah This is a real high energy <laughs> session, wasn't it? It's not a session, though, is it? It's just a video. That's how I'm feeling. This is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling all right. I'm just tired. See you later. I'm going to go. Bye, bye, bye.